ನಮಶ್ರೇಯತಿರಾಜಾಯ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದಸೂರ ಸಚ್ಚಿತ್ಸುಖಸ್ವರೂಪಾಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ತಾಪಹಾರಿಣಿ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಟು ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಮೂರ್ತಿಜಿ ಅವರ್ ಗುಡ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ವೆಲ್ ವಿಶರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಡ್ವೈಸರ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆನಿ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಠ್ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಟು ದ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಜೆ ಎನ್ ಟಿ ಯು ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಅದರ್ ಡಿಗ್ನೆಟರೀಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಡೇಸ್ ಮೈ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಟು ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಸೆಮಿನಾರ್ ಆನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾಸ್ ಗ್ರೋತ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಚಾಲೆಂಜಸ್ ರೋಡ್ ಅಹೆಡ್ ಎ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ಟಾಕ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಹರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಥ್ರೂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಮೂರ್ತಿ ಗಾರು and a very good evening warm greetings to all the wonderful elite young friends here from the corporate industry and others before i proceed let me just share a small thought when shri shrikant ji was giving instruction to switch off the mobile phones a time has come here in our country especially the young people we are losing self confidence and gaining self confidence and there are some great people bharat ratna who sleep with the cell in their hand and when the mother takes it they wake up and they take compost pill to sleep that is the addiction of the cell over the brain we have to understand in the modern times that technology is good servant but bad master there are many lives ruined by this 6 inches fellow which is controlling the 6 feet man that is a tragedy even einstein says i dread the future when the machine controls the mind of man i'm not quoting the exact words i'm giving you the meaning of what einstein the albert einstein felt so self confidence is a modern gift of technology but we can the give a why a anti virus system for the human problems of the 21st century in the form of atma shraddha or self confidence which india lost terribly and the second idea that i want to share in the prince in the presence of the respected principal in this jnt campus that when i that when i get a opportunity to visit but i get a surprise there is one subject missing there if that can be incorporated without bias without any other hesitation or a wall between you and the students and that subject is mind engineering or vivekananda engineering <laughs> i think 99% of the suicides in andhra pradesh or karnataka or kerala or india would reduce if swami ji enters into the heart and mind of the students don't bring in religion don't bring in all sorts of things that is where we are going wrong we should understand after swami vivekananda's advent sister nivedita beautifully writes in an introduction to swami ji's complete works she says henceforth there is no difference between sacred and the secular life itself is a religion to work is to pray to labor is to renounce life itself becomes a religion for us india is a sacred country not just a secular country bringing some of these ideas bringing the ideas of character we have everything today except that one vivekananda's guru sri ramakrishna says beautifully you write 10 numbers of zeros and 10 zeros on the blackboard no value but you put number 1 in front two zeros will become 100 three zeros will become 1000 and the value goes on to trillion billion zillion when you raise the one the zeros will become zeros and put the one zeros will become heroes that one is character and i humanly tell if you have that one character along with your volkswagen or microsoft or anything that you have in this country in the world bharat ratna will come searching for you and if you don't have character cbi will come to your house <laughs> that's what we see the wonderful game of maya today we are all caught up in a maya bazaar Raymond make a full man without that 
so-called educated people being trapped by the virus. You have got an antivirus system called Northern Capsworski in real time in your computer. There's nobody, ex even Bill Gates probably doesn't have a computer without antivirus system. Rather Narayan Murthy or Azim Premji or Guru Murthy or our friend from the Google and friend from anybody, Microsoft. But what is that antivirus system that we have for the supercomputer called the mind? 1,35,454 youth died in India out of suicides. India of the Buddha, India of the Mahatma, India of the sages, India of the Bhagavad Gita, India of the Vivekananda, people are dying like worms for little failures. So this is where Vivekananda comes in. My dear young friends, 1897, Vivekananda came to revive that great spirit of our drooping country. And what did he say? He gave a prescription, an antivirus system for the mind. In Madras lectures, please read, if you have not read. I'm sure many might, might not have read Swami Vivekananda's complete life or his teachings, but you appreciate him, you might have got a quotation here, there, very good, Swami, very great Swami, but that doesn't solve the problem. You go to a doctor and appreciate his English, appreciate his prescription, but don't take the medicine. The time has come, 2013, Vivekan has 150th birth anniversary. Till next year, February, it will go on all over the country as you saw the massive celebrations, the innovativeness of spreading the message of this great man who was not a member of any political party, was not an industrialist, who was not a businessman, who was not any other celebrity by any chance. But still, the British Parliament says Vivekananda's message has to be celebrated in England universities also because he belongs as much to India as much to England by the present Prime Minister. <laughs> My dear young friends, 1897, Swamiji conquers the whole world, comes back to India, travels the most part of Tamil Nadu from Sri, Sri Lanka, Ceylon, Colombo to Almora in the north, and the powerful, the best lectures which Swamiji gave, which created a new revolution in our India's heritage and freedom movement, was in Chennai. And in one of the lectures, beautifully says, the time has come for re-education of the educated. Because all our educated people have become mustached babies. Nambi, Pambi, goody, goody, what English? He is using this English in 1897. British India, powerful man, who had the tremendous challenge and the conviction and the guts to say mustache babies and moral pygmies, re-education of the educated. And he says beautifully, if the poor need light, the educated need more light. If the weak, the illiterate need light, we need re-education of the educated because the vanities of the education are tremendous today. This is a turning point in our country's history. We will not go into the details of this. This is not the time for me to share thoughts on a local man. We can meet sometime anywhere. But I just say, every young man, irrespective of his background, whether he's in Microsoft or Cognizant or TCS or IBM, you are taught how to operate the computer, but there are very few people who are taught how to operate their mind. You operate money, millions of dollars, but your emotions are like a tsunami. There's a beautiful house, well furnished, well decorated, and the name of the house is Shanti Nivas. The postman could not enter for three days. Shouting, fighting, quarreling, abusing each other, husband, wife, parents, children. The building is Shanti, inside is Ashanti. Ashantasya Kutasukham. My dear friends, the turning point says, it's a decisive moment in a game. We will say chess championship between Vishwanath Anand and Carlson, or whether it's Sindulkar, or whether it is XYZ in cricket, or badminton, or shuttle, turning point. From there, we can start tumbling, or somebody starts winning. But here is the point. When we are addressing the corporate world, the elite of the city, who have everything at their fingertips, Along with your professional excellence, my dear friends, please think of human excellence also. The time has come now. The man behind the machine is neglected. 
Today we are worshipping the machine so much. Bertrand Russell, in his wonderful book, The Impact of Science on Society, says, a time will come, the modern man, enamored with the great inventions and the gadgets, etc., will go in front of the machine early morning with great devotion and pray, oh machine, make me a good nut and bolt in your system. <laughs> this is the modern form of worship, the satan, he says. And after a few pages in that book, he says, unless men increase in wisdom as much in knowledge, increase of knowledge will be increase of sorrow. What a fantastic observation of our problems today. Increase of knowledge will be increase of sorrow. And what is the education that we are giving? 20 years back when I came to Hyderabad as a guest lecturer in Ramakrishna Mart, I met an engineering college principal. He said, Swamiji's AP education is pressure cooker education. And after 20 years I come, in my, two, three and a half years back, another principal tells me, sir, what, I asked him what is the condition. He said, Swamiji, to steam, pressure cooker education 20 years back, now it has improved one step forward, it is steam boiler education. They are pasted, they are rolled and outside they come like zombies. Because they see only three rooms, bedroom, bathroom, study room. <laughs> and these fellows go to IIT Madras, 400 acres and he cannot walk also. Because he has not gone beyond the third bedroom. <laughs> and between the library and the Sarayu hostel it is for four furlongs. And he collapses there and he has not seen all in one except the textbook called all in one. I don't know why they call it all in one. And they go there, two lab books in Madras, IIT Madras, and he's amazed to see his confused master. Unfortunately, he commits suicide. I know of a case of a girl who did, his, who, who did her B.Tech in Hyderabad, I don't name the college, went to M.Tech to do in Madras, IIT Madras, and after three months this year, she committed suicide, Raitha Bidda, from Karim Nagar. She could not face, there's no strength, there's no stuff inside. She may get a gold medal in M.Tech, but what life itself is gone. My dear friends, this is the solution which Swamiji gives, 3H formula for all of us. Head to think, a heart to feel, and the hands to work. You combine it with professional excellence. And this 3H formula is not Roti Kapura Makan education that we get today, but it can drill through the adamantine walls of difficulties, it can make a caterpillar into a butterfly. It can bring out, as Mahatma Gandhi says, wonderful leaders from the youth of India, just like cream and butter come out from milk. That is the metamorphosis. That is the transformation which Vivekananda executed in a short span of just 39 years. And the working period of Swami Vivekananda was only nine years, or maybe less than that. 1893, September 11th, his work started in Chicago. 1902, July 4th, the man is gone leaving his body. And somebody asked him, Swamiji, you have started the freedom movement, you have started this, you have started the Ramakrishna mission, you have galvanized the entire national consciousness. Who will be your leader? Do you think I am going? Swamiji says, the body has to go. I am a voice without a form. I have worked enough for 1,500 years. The youth of India shall revolve around me for the next 15 centuries. What a masterly stroke of a visionary. Our man, 39 years and 6 months, leaving his body and a legacy of 1,500 years and hardly we have touched the tip of the iceberg, which you have seen. What more magic and marvels that we'll see if we really follow the teachings of Swami Vivekananda. Head to think, a heart to feel and hands to work. You may have a head to think. You have got the concentration power, you have got the programmers, you have got the designers, you have got the wonderful, fantastic infrastructure here of Jain to you. But do we have a heart? Do we really feel? It is not the apathy and the empathy that we want, uh, sympathy that we want, my dear friends. We want the empathy. We want you to feel, feel, feel for the nation. Talli Bharati Edustindi Baita. Ma Bharati Rorangai. Her own children are kicking her. Her children are corrupting her. Her children are looting her. Eight, 729 million mobile phones in India. My statistic may be wrong. It may be less or minus. America has got only 279 million mobile phones. Every house today, five mobile phones in India, but nobody communicates with the other. I happened to walk on the beach of Vishakapatnam 15 days ago, I saw a marvelous sight of India today. I saw two young friends, young people, youth, sitting on the parapet wall on the beach, nine o'clock, cool breeze, 
with a samosa and a cool drink in between them. They have come to the beach, we can know that they have come for recreation after a hard day's work. And what were they doing? Taking the big iPad or the small iPhone and going on using their finger, pressing it this way, that way, nobody communicating with the other. Poor samosa is waiting. <laughs> Two and a half kilometers we walked one way and came back, same posture, both one side, eastern side, and our western side. And dog was watching the samosa. <laughs> then we saw India today. You have come to the beach to communicate or relax, but you are busy talking with some friend in America? Or you could have done in your house? Head to think, kaha chale gaya? We know what to think, not how to think. But Swamiji gives the prescription, like the Japanese, teach your children how to think, how to control your body, and 50% of our problems are solved. Finally, the feeling part I'm coming quickly. This is where Swamiji rules over every other great leader in the world. 1963, Vivekananda Chicago, Vivekananda Centenary, Dr. Radha Krishnan opening a statue on Vivekananda Beach next to the Vivekananda Rilam in Madras. After giving a speech, some journalists asked him, what is the difference between Swami Vivekananda and other great leaders of the country? Radha Krishnan himself was great, second president of India, spoke in Harvard, spoke in Cambridge, and a man of tremendous intellect. He is being asked a very important question. What is the difference between you people and Swami Vivekananda? One line answer. Dr. Radhakrishnan says, My dear friends, the difference between Swami Vivekananda and all of us is Vivekananda lives in the soul of India, we exist on the soil of India. He lives, we exist. This is from the second president, Dr. Radhakrishnan. He himself a marvelous brain and a marvelous heart. So let us feel from the heart, let us stretch our hand to the suffering humanity, Two hours journey from Hyderabad in Nalagonda and Devarkonda, you see the starvation and somebody says, my statistics may be wrong, Guru Murthy can correct me. I read in the papers, 45,000 crores has been used to dispose the rotten wheat in Punjab, throw it into the Indian Ocean. Is this the policies? Is this what Gandhi wanted or Vivekananda wanted? Let us feel from the heart. It's not the emotional heart feeling, falling for somebody, it is feeling for the nation. Last two points, Vivekananda inspired. Don't think just he has come only for a time or just for a period. Swami Vivekananda inspired two of the mighty giants of the world in, during his lifetime. One was J.N. Tata, Jamshadji, Nasoranji Tata. Some of you may know the story, but I'm not going to the details of it. Tata going to Canada, America to big, bring the technology of manufacturing steel and to start a steel industry in Jamshedpur and Vivekananda going to spread the message of Vedanta in the West. Two mighty minds, one hardly 28 years, the other man is 50 plus, the old, the old and Tata, and both of them meet on the board and the, while in the evening, discuss about the problems of India, the probable solutions, and one of them is industry, one of them is science and technology with spirituality as the backbone, and Swami just gives him an idea and they part to start in center where asceticism and science will shake hand, young minds will not just go out for a job, they will be trained as self-employed engineers for our nation. After four years, a beautiful letter waits on Vivekananda's table from Jay and Tata, Swami, do you remember me? We were co-passengers on the express, on the Empress going to Chicago. You gave me the idea. I have donated 28 lakh rupees for that institute. Today it is called IISC, Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. The brainchild of Swami Vivekananda. My dear friends, the another great soul personality that Vivekananda inspired within few minutes was John D. Rockefeller. What a tremendous transformation. And Rockefeller, within one year, earned $500 million. But when it comes to insurance, he was such a miser, he could not pay $150 also. Such a man went into depression, millions of dollars, but he could not drink a glass of milk. He wanted to die, he wanted to commit suicide. But one of the friends of Rockefeller takes him to Vivekananda. Rockefeller goes uninvited. Swamiji is writing something on, the pay, on his table. He doesn't even lift his head. Rockefeller feels as insulted. He's not even asking him to sit down. Rockefeller says, do you know who I am? Vivekananda, deep intuited man, the yogi that he was, went through the deep subconscious mind of Rockefeller and told all the business secrets, all the secrets even his wife and children did not know and made him cry like a child. And he said, Mr. Rockefeller, 
open your treasury, you are only a trustee, you are not the owner of your property. And somebody dictating to Rockefeller like this, he could not bear it. He ran, walked out of the house, pushing the butler aside. After a few days, Vivekananda's medicine started working in his subconscious mind. He came with a check and threw it on Swamiji's table in arrogance. Swami, are you satisfied? Thank me for receiving this, for giving this. Vivekananda put that paper in his pocket and said, Mr. Rockefeller, it is for you to thank me for receiving this. If I am not there, to whom will you give? And that was the first donation of Rockefeller Foundation. Later on, America produced 11 Nobel Prize winners with the scholarships which Rockefeller gives, and pencil in, and so many other things were invented with Rockefeller Foundation's support. And the first transformation that your money goes to the people, and Vivekananda inspired generations of the people. We may quote Rockefeller, we may quote this man and that man. But my dear friends, in the modern times today, there is one girl who is inspired by Swami Vivekananda, the first amputee woman in the world to climb Mount Everest on May 21st, 2013, called Arunima Simha from Lucknow, and put Vivekananda's picture on Mount Everest on his 150th birthday and did Namaskaram there. The challenging spirit of Swamiji should enter into a, the young minds of Hyderabad and other places and galvanize your resources, galvanize your think tank, galvanize your knowledge for rebuilding the nation and freeing it from all the viruses today. And I'm sure that with this meeting and with these stories of Guru Murthy and all of you assembled here, this seminar would not go waste. It will become fertile, fruitful, and I'm happy that JNT has given this campus and JNT is purified by, because Vivekananda has come into this institution. Thank you. Jai Vivekananda.